Hey everybody, Wayne here. In today's Let's Play, I'm going to play through part of Lanzareth Ridge, Battle of the Bulge, designed by David Thompson, art by Nils Johansson, and published by DVG. This is part of the Valiant Defense series um, that David, uh, David Thompson has created. I have not covered any of them on my channel, although I have played Pavlov's House. I haven't played any of the other games. Um, I think this is the fourth. Um, could be wrong, but I believe this is the fourth. Um, and this is a recent release. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover uh, Wave 1 or Attack Period 1. There's four total attack periods. Um, I'm just going to do the first one for the video here just so you guys can see the game in action, kind of see how it's played, and maybe help you guys decide if you want to get the game or not and if it will get you uh, and also help teach you how to play. So um, I do want to thank DVG for providing this review copy for me to show off to you guys. Okay, overview of the game quick, and then we will dive into the actual um, playthrough. All right, overview time. So I have the map board set up here for the initial first wave setup. Um, what you are, you are playing as the American Defenders. This has happened, this is you know, a historical event that happened on the first day of the Battle of the Bulge. The Germans are trying to take this ridge, and you as the Americans are trying to hold out as long as possible, um, possibly through to the end of uh, the fourth phase. So let's look at the map here. So there's some iconography on here, and there's some little icons, there's some uh, chits around, everything like that. It may look a little confusing at first. Trust me, it's not. It's really fairly simple game. So you have the American defenders in their name, right? So you have Jenkins, Preston, Dustin, McConnell, Craiger, Adams, etc., um, and sometimes they'll have just sort of a helmet there. Maybe they didn't have a historical photograph or say Fort here does have one. So these are people that were actually part of this battle, right? Like this is historically accurate, um, with their names. So you'll have the American defenders and they're within each of these areas here. You can see these different boxes where I have them all set up right now. Some of them are labeled, for instance, the log cabin here, but the rest of them are not. Now, within each box, you're going to see different icons and colors. What this is, is that controls line of sight and also the number of the location for the enemy. The enemy are the Germans who are attacking. Now, they're very generic. You're going to have, you know, riflemen of different strength. You're just going to have these, like, little circle counters. Say, one strength, two strength. You're going to have leaders, and you're going to have medics. They're going to be pushing up these tracks. Now, the game is going to be driven by... Cards, attackers one, so this is the first phase, this like first attack phase, first wave, and like I said, it goes up to four. You're going to flip them over, and it's going to tell you, say, oh, an assault. An assault, it's going to activate, oh, and it's actually going to place a leader in this case. So you grab one of the leader tokens, and it says place on, you can see, five square. So I mentioned the boxes and how they're labeled. You can see up top, at the top of the box, there's a label, five and a square. Now, you know, we have like one orange hexagon. And then you have two orange hexagon, one, two, three, four, five of the squares, brown squares. You have a purple hexagon. You have, oh, and it's also a six brown square. And then you have a one triangle. So when you're drawing it, it's going to have that right there. It's going to tell you, okay, you're placing a unit in a certain place. Or MG42, you're going to place the C square. MG42, and it's going to go in its location right down here. And now in the future, when you draw it, it would activate and it would attack one of those locations. Now, when you're placing a unit, such as the leader here in this card, Assault, Leader, Place 4, like I mentioned, you have the areas that are labeled, right? All you have to do is follow the track down, follow it all the way down to the end of where the Germans are coming in. You can see also this line down here. So if you ever get kind of confused on the tracks, just go ahead and follow if this is where the Germans will be entering from. So from 4 down to here, go ahead and place them there. And what you do is you actually then push the rest of the units. So this is this system is states of siege style, right? Where you have the enemy advancing along a track. So you're gonna go ahead and push them along the track. Right there, very simple. Now you have different things on the map as well. You can see here is this little guy right here. This indicates there's a barbed wire fence. That's gonna hold up the Germans unless they have a leader on the track, in which case then I guess they get good enough orders or they're smart enough to know how to get around it, in which case then they'll just move right through it. Otherwise, it's actually gonna hold them up until you have uh, three, and then once you get the fourth um, rifleman, then they're gonna push through it. You also have these grenades, little grenade counters as booby traps, 
once they move past it or moving past it, they're going to go ahead and take one hit to one of their strength points. So if there's only one rifleman and he went started going past it, it would be booby trap would go off and he would be removed from the game. Okay, so card driven, right? You're drawing these cards. Um, not card driven for you, but card driven for the AI. Drawing the cards is telling you, hey, an assault. Maybe you roll in place. That way it's maybe not always exact same, right? So here you're placing a two strength. Could be anywhere from one to six on the brown boxes areas here. Okay, so the Germans are marching on you. You have your men in the different positions. You can take a variety of actions with them. I'm not, I'm not going to necessarily cover every one, but basically you can take... They're divided into two types. Major actions, which will exhaust a defender, flipping them over to their da -da -da, exhausted side. Or you have minor actions, which don't exhaust. In either case, during each of your defense phases. So there's attacker phases when you're drawing the cards and moving the Germans and attacking with them. There's a defense phase. You get five actions. You have these five little tokens here. You can go ahead and use to put on a guy to say, okay, he took an action. Major actions I mentioned, you exhaust them, you flip them over. Minor actions, you don't. What are some examples? A full attack. So say you are attacking from your area to where the Germans are. It's going to be a major action. You're going to exhaust that defender, whoever's attacking. Um, you can attack with the machine guns. You can possibly provide an assistance, flipping over exhausted defenders. You can reposition, which is moving from any area to any other area, um, etc. Now, the minor actions, things where you, you do not flip them over, and you, but you still have to use an action counter, are things like dismounting a weapon, one of these machine guns, right? Flipping it over to its dismounted side, which then you can move it. Speaking of which, moving, moving from one area to an adjacent area only takes, you know, takes an action, but you're not going to be exhausted. Um, recovering, which is removing the disrupted token, etc. There are other ones as well. The point is, though, is you're kind of limited, right? So you have five actions each phase. But we're also limited in that if someone becomes exhausted, they're basically done for that wave. From their exhausted back to um, their active side. The only way to do that is a commander. So if you have the C, and this is where it comes into certain designations on your, your men here. So let's go ahead and look at them quick. Buke is a commander, right? So he has a, a, a command major action, which will flip him over to his exhausted side. And the C there indicates he can conduct a command. He would flip over up to three exhausted defenders in the same or adjacent combat positions to their unexhausted side. Now, basically, that, as far as I'm aware, as far as I can think of right now, that is the only way to flip them over from exhausted to unexhausted to ready to go. So keep in mind that if you're exhausting uh, men with major actions, you're going to run out of defenders pretty quick. Um, along with the you know designators on here, so I mentioned the C is command. You have something like R, which is radio, which means that they can use the um, radio. They can move to the area where the radio is or the artillery radio to conduct a certain action. I'll explain that when we actually get into it because we're going to do some of that as part of the game. James here, he has the M. What is that for? That basically is he can use the machine guns. It's called a just fire action. Um, so he can use the machine guns and actually fire with them. So if you have someone who doesn't necessarily have an indicator, like say Adams here, you know, he can't necessarily do any special actions. Now, when you're still looking at him, he still has value. And the main area is going to be his attack in the bottom right. So when you look at his counter here, see he has a D8. If he conducted an attack, so basically with his personal weapon, right? Not a machine gun or anything like that, he'd roll a 1D8. James, same thing. Although he, obviously, with an M, with a just fire, if he's in the same space as a machine gun, he can use the machine gun, which is going to cause a lot more damage or a lot more likely to hit. Um, trying to think anything else to cover the basics. So, oh, the other one other key thing comes to attacking and defending and you're shooting at people line of fire. How does it work? Well, like I mentioned with the boxes and you have the, the little logos, you know, the certain shape, it's a brown, you know, it's brown or it's a hexagon and it's a certain color that determines your line of sight units that are say in this five brown five square here can shoot and if you look at the defender or excuse me the attacker positions right so all these positions down here where the germans are next to them you'll see numbers you'll see say three um and then but it's in a brown square and you have five that's in a purple hexagon what that right here means is that if you are in any brown square and it's any of the defenders right us americans are in a brown square you can attack that area right here with a three and it has a three defense rating so whether you're right here here 
here, here, all the way over here, he could attack there. Now, you have to keep in mind a couple little things, such as, see these dash lines right here? Say a plus one on them. You're kind of crossing a ridge line. It's, it's creating a lot of distance. You're going to have negatives, or I should say, they will have positives to defense. Because that number is the defense. And you're going to have to roll when you're rolling to hit, right? So, say you shoot this machine gun with his... 1d10 and you're just rolling one die in the in part this particular case for our example and you're attacking right here right in front of you now you roll a 1d10 we're in the brown square he's in a brown square he's a defensive three i don't see any, anything else to be a modifier because he's right there you on that 1d10 you'd have to get three or higher and you're going to get a hit and you're going to eliminate one of the german units so all right and then so you see for instance you know you have say some of these places can be attacked from two different places you attack from any of the brown squares you could also be attacked from the purple um purple hexagon over here so just keep that in mind um keep that in mind as you're playing so all right i think that's enough for an overview um uh, machine guns you have to keep track of ammunition yeah it's gonna be a lot of you know the germans are marching up i'm gonna be maneuvering some of my men and we're gonna be shooting back and uh trying to keep those germans off our lines so Let's go ahead. I think it's enough an overview. Let's dive into the actual gameplay. All right, game board is reset. Let's go ahead. Wave one, beginning of the game. Landreth Ridge, Battle of the Bulge. Let's get started. So attacker phase first. We draw cards. There's going to be three cards. So first one, and I'll go ahead and set them over here, and I'll put down one, two, three, so we know, um, you know exactly where we're at. So MG42, and it says place or activate the A hexagon. So there's an A hexagon and A square. So A hexagon is all the way over to the left. So he will be placed. Next time, if we drew that card, or we drew a card that says um, the A hexagon, he would be firing then. So, that's one. All right, card two. MG42, A hexagon, really? And I just I just shuffled these. So, I had just shuffled these. I played a bunch of games, so they're totally randomized, and not good luck for us. All right, so now he's going to fire. So, we look at the card. The MG42 is going to activate. He's going to fire. Now, we're going to roll 1d6. and going to fire either area one or area two. Um, hexagon right here here so orange or orange you could say so either the colors or if you're colorblind you have issues with the colors you have the shapes as well which is very nice so one or two it's gonna roll a 1d6 roll a six that is area two right here so he's gonna shoot at these three um not a good thing for us so what it, we actually are rolling for each of them now we're gonna roll a 1d6 and you have to check the valor 1d6 at each one and check their valor which valor is the number at the bottom left so for instance queen has a two dustman has a four Let's check for queen. Um, a one. So let me check. It is equal to or higher than they get disrupted. Okay, so a one obviously is going to disrupt anybody. Oh no, equal or higher? Equal or higher. So he's not disrupted. Okay, beautiful. So dustman is a four. So that is lower. And then McConnell has a three. He was, he is disrupted. So McConnell will be disrupted. So he takes a disruptive token there. All right, and then last card for the attacker phase is an assault. It's a two strength German unit, roll to place. So we're gonna roll a 1d6 again. It'll be one of the brown areas, a five. So the five, which is right down here. So he'll pop in here, which moves everyone down one. All right, and that is the three actions, three cards for the attacker. So now we go to the defender phase. All right, defense phase. What should I do? So what I, I have a pretty good idea what I want to do because I've now played this game several times, but um, <clears throat> a couple things. I want to get this artillery going, the radio artillery, which allows me to eliminate cards from the draw deck. So I'm going to get that going, and I need to get someone over there, though, that can use it. So Springer, I see, radio A, RA, um, radio artillery. So let's go ahead and move him over to area two, which does cost an action, but we're just going to move him to one area so he stays unexhausted. I can move him all the way over there, with the um, um, reposition action, but then he would be exhausted, so we wouldn't be able to use him the rest of this turn unless I had him flip back over. It's just a whole mess, so we'll just take it slow and steady, get him over there. All right, second action. Let's go ahead. I do want to get... I want to reposition some of these guns and some, some of these machine guns because some of the places they are now, I feel like they're just not as effective. So, for instance, the machine gun on the um, Jeep over here. So, let's go ahead and... James will move him over here and he's going to go ahead and get this uh, dismounted but let's go ahead and move Buke as well over there he'll assist him so they can speed up and do a little faster so that takes an action and again these are move actions and those are minor actions you know it takes an action token but they're not being exhausted by it and then let's do 
Only have two actions left, huh? I'm not too worried about the Germans, you know, getting into our lines yet. You could you know, kind of have a f couple uh, phases to do some maneuvering. Um, let's get this one moved as well. So Preston will go ahead and take a um, dismount weapon action to flip this weapon over to its dismounted side. And the one left, let's go ahead and move, um, I think, I'm looking around here. Yeah, let's move Wibben. Let's just move him down from the log cabin down to the front lines a little bit here. So, because he had A, which means he can do a um, assist, which he can flip over an exhausted defender, which is pretty nice. So, um, like I said, you have kind of the um, assist or command. So the, the commanders can do it to a bunch of them or assist can do it to one unit in the same area. So think of them as like a medic, right? Okay, and that's it. That's all my action. That's my five actions. So we're done with the defense phase. So now we go to the next attacker phase. All right. Next attacker phase, first card, Assault, Leader 3. He is going to pop in at Area 6 Square. So right here, follow it down, boom, right here. And unfortunately for us, because there's a leader here now, the barbed wire fence doesn't stop the rifleman. So he's going to go ahead and go ahead and remove the barbed wire fence. And he will go ahead and advance. And remember, it's Area 6 is kind of the track. So you, otherwise, you could think, like, well, which way does he go? Well, track six is what's activated, so he's going to follow down six. Rifleman, the two strength, and then the leader here. Next card, MG42. Place to activate A square, so that has not been activated yet, so we'll go ahead and put him out. So that's two, two of the machine guns out. Not loving that. And third and final card, Assault, A three strength, um, one through six. Go ahead and roll. So hopefully not one of these ones where we've already pushed some men. So five which area five right here. So it is that same track, but it's a different, uh, instead of going this way, it's going this way. So the rifle, I'm gonna move here, move up, two strength, the leader, and attacker there. Oh, they're already closing in. I wasn't too worried at first. I was like, oh, I'm not too worried about where these men, they're already literally pushing right here like, a, like crazy. So, okay, that's the end of that attacker phase. So now we go to the old uh, defense phase. What I like to do then is I'll just grab my little guy's back, my little tokens. I like to leave them on there just kind of as a reminder of, okay, I'm, I already finished up my phase, etc. Okay, so a couple things. Um, we're probably gonna end up doing some combat here because we wanna keep these guys back. But for now, let's go ahead and do, um, take an action with Buke, and we're gonna go ahead and flip this machine gun over. Um, dismount it from the Jeep here. And then we'll do another action on James. He's going to move. And when you move, you can bring a um, dismounted weapon with you. And he's going to move back to area four here. So that way we see we go. When basically what we were doing was getting that machine gun off the Jeep and back up to the front lines here. With a third action, let's move Springer and move him over to the artillery, radio artillery Jeep. So that way, ne starting next turn, he can start um, activating that. And I'll show you guys how that works. Um, let's go ahead and obviously over here we still want to get let's use Preston and grab this dismounted machine gun and move it down here or he's moving and bringing it with him I should say and one more action left um, well that's we got I think mean, we should start attacking here so simple is what we're gonna do is we're gonna activate um, Milosevic he's got the M so we can do adjust fire which is basically you're firing the machine guns so we'll put that on him and we'll go ahead and flip him over to exhaust it because this will exhaust him so we're going to get that out of the way. Now he's going to go ahead and fire the M1919. And where he's going to fire, he's going to fire at here to start with. Now, here's how it's going to work. So he gets a 1D10 for that. Fantastic. A nice thing right now is because he is in the same area as this leader, Slape, who has the star up here, that means he can inspire. And Slape, he's sort of a generalized leader. He can inspire any unit. Otherwise, um, you have to be with the same squad. For instance, um, a leader of Dustman, he's the leader of squad A, right? Or you know, where's the leader of B? Oh, Redman, he's the leader of squad B. So you have to be with the same squad, except Slape is an overall commander. All right, so he expire, inspires him. What does that mean, expire? Simple, when you are attacking, you get an extra die for free. So that D10, he now gets another D10. So that's really nice bonus there. Um, you don't have to spend anything or do anything special. Just by being there, he's inspiring him to uh, fight fight harder, fight better. Um, so what we'll do as well, before I forget, let's go ahead and we do have to keep track of ammunition in this game. You don't have unlimited ammunition here. You are, you know, a trap defender, basically. 
So we're firing that uh, M1919. He has five loaded. Let's go ahead. Let's fire one. And you can choose to fire more if you want. I choose to only fire one. Um, and you don't have to spend ammunition for the bonus die. So we spend one for the one, and then we get the bonus die for the inspired leadership. All right, so that's 2d10. We're firing here. Remember, we're in a brown square. He has a three defense. No other modifiers. So we just need to get a three or higher. But a four or five. So we definitely got the hit. He is killed taken out beautiful now what we can do is um if the attack is successful so we removed him obviously if you, after completing the first attack we can uh make additional attacks with the same defender and weapon until the weapon counter no longer has loaded ammunition so basically we can as a machine gun right we can kind of keep firing um however just keep in mind for each attack after the first the attacker counter receives a cumulative plus one defense which the attacker in this case is the rifleman here or whoever, whoever I'm attacking, right? So let's go ahead. We'll spend another ammunition. We still get the, you know, one. So one ammunition for our one attack. That's all I want to do. And then we'll do the plus one for the Inspire for Slate being adjacent or, excuse me, in the same area. And we're going to go ahead and fire here at this Rifleman. Now he has a three defense, but remember, this is sort of the second attack. So his three becomes a four. So we need at least a four on one of these dies. A nine and a nine. So actually, we we'll go ahead and we take him out very easily. Um, kind of thinking here. Jeez, should we should we push our luck a little bit? Should we do do some more? I think we should. So let's go ahead. Actually, um, let's go ahead and do a third attack. Uh, we'll spend one more ammunition. One d ten. One d ten. Inspire bonus. And we're gonna attack this area right here. There's a four. Now, remember, plus one for each. So this is now four, five, six. So now it's a six. So we need a six or higher on one of these to get a hit. We got a six and an eight. <clears throat> That's two sixes at least. So he is taken out right there. Beautiful. We're done there. We're done. No more. No more. This freaking uh, machine gun's going to overheat. Which, if you do more than three attacks, it will has a potential to um, overheat the weapon. Um, or maybe to use more than three ammunition. I guess I'm not sure. But anyway... We're done with that attack. Beautiful. And that was the last of our actions too, wasn't it? Yep, so we're done with the defense phase. So now we go over to the next attacker phase. All right, attacker phase, first card. MG42, all oh, these freaking machine guns, man. B square, so it's not activating another one. It's out at least, it's just getting them in place. Gee, I can't wait till they start unloading on my guys. All right, next card, card number two, assault. A one strength rifleman will be placed in one to six, area one to six square. That's a two, so he's placed right boom, right here. So move everyone up, remember? Move everyone up. They only stack up when you get caught behind the, uh, or in front of, I guess, for them, in front of the barbed wire. And the third and final, assault, one strength rifleman, area one to six again. It's one to six square, and three, so right here. All right. Okay, things are looking pretty good for us, actually. And that is it for the attacker phase. See, sometimes you get, they hit you hard and it's crazy. And sometimes it's a little more, a little more easy. Like, I mean, they're building up though. Don't worry. Um, they're, they're building up. Eventually you're going to get, you're going to get hit and you're going to get hit hard. So, all right. Defense phase. So I will go ahead and take all my tokens back. Like I said, I like to leave them on until the next. That way just kind of remember, kind of as a reminder of like, if they've been used, I've already done my defense phase. And then at the end I can just restart it at the next phase. So. All right, let's go ahead. I want to show you guys Springer, the radio artillery. Super simple. So we'll go ahead and use him. He has the RA, um, RA on his uh, icon here. So we can go ahead and use him, RA, which you place a radio token, aka a Wi-Fi token. <laughs> you place it on the artillery jeep here. Um, now what what will happen is, um, long story short is there'll be an action he can take that exhausts him that will discard any of the, however many tokens are on here, and then you're gonna roll dice, and if he gets certain high enough, you may discard attacker cards. So you're reducing the amount of cards, the amount of attackers you're gonna face. Um, basically, you know, sort of a, um, what am I thinking? When, you know, it's an it's abstracted method for the artillery, right? The artillery's not attacking directly, it's abstracted to show there's less attackers available. So anyway, that was one action. Let's go ahead. We'll spend, let's see, James. Let's do an action on James. And he's going to go ahead and flip this bad boy over. So he's ready to go. Hmm. I'm not worried. So I'm not really worried about here because he kind of did, he did some work over here. So I'm not too worried. 
building up a little bit over here. Oh, yep. So let's use another action on Preston here to flip over machine gun. So it's available. We're mounting it as well. When I say flip it over, we're taking it in place weapon minor action. So just <laughs> the technical the technical terms right here. So all right. Um I'm thinking, I'm looking around, I'm like, let's have someone up because I don't want to overdo things because like you gotta kind of pace yourself a little bit sometimes. Um let's go ahead and move. Let's do Gaki's gonna move. Move them down to here for now. And then we'll actually move. Wibben will go ahead and move over by James. I feel like he may need to use his ability eventually. I maybe should have sent him over there. Uh, I guess we got they got Queen over here. So, yeah, that'll help. Okay. All right. Well, that's all my actions, I guess, right? Jeez, that's it. Sometimes they go by pretty fast. So, that's it for the defense phase. On the next attacker phase. Attacker phase, first card, MG42, B square. B square? Did I already place that? Oh, it activates, that's why, duh. I'm, for a second I was thinking, okay, I was in the mode of like placing him. So that means he activates, so right here, so he activates. And he will attack with the roll of 1d6 to see where he attacks. Area is either three or four. Roll to two, that's area three. So he attacks Fancher and Gaki right here. Uh, so he will roll a against a Gaki with a two. A four, yep, so he is disrupted. And then Fancher with his three power, a two, so he is not disrupted. So he only disrupted Gaki. All right, next card. Assault, a three strength. German is placed one through six. Brown square, area two, right here. So he's placed right here, which are right from the move. And remember, there's no leaders on the track, so this... Uh, Barbed wire holds them up. They're going to stack up till there's three. Right there. And then last card. Another assault. Two strength German. Roll in place one through six. Area three. And right here. So again, we're going to stack up behind that barbed wire. Okay. That is it for attacker phase. We go to defense phase. Hmm, I don't like getting these men disrupted though. So let's go ahead. First off, we'll grab all of our action tokens back. That's all of them. I thought I was missing one. I wish, right? Wish I had an extra action. All right, first action. Let's go ahead before we forget. Springer uses radio artillery to put another Wi Fi symbol. <clears throat> I mean, radio symbol over here on artillery. And we'll wait till we got several before we do it because we want to make sure we have. Um, good rolls lots of chances i should say so because i think for each yeah for each radio token discarded you roll a 1d6 so uh, but you have to get a five or six to like for it to count so we want to have multiple before we risk it um we don't want to run through the deck first because that would defeat the purpose but yeah i think we're good now all right let's go ahead and use up well what should we do here i don't like Mm. let's do because we have men here here so we want to use him here so let's go ahead and try to hold them back right yeah let's do that so let's go and activate james for a adjust fire so basically using his machine gun so flip him over exhausted he's going to be fighting the m2 which uses a oh, i should have brought where's uh Oh, Springer's his squad leader, so that's not going to help him. Where's the other other overall commander? Where's he at? I feel like I'm missing something here. Or uh, the second commander, Buke over here. Oh, Buke's just been chilling. Buke's just chilling over here. Hang on, let's do... Let's act, so let's move Buke. we got to move him back to the front lines. I don't know what I was thinking. we got to get Buke up here. So we just did a move action. There we go. Um... So we're not going to fire yet because to get the benefit of the Inspire, he has to have him, um, doesn't have to have an action token on him. So we're not going to mess with him at all. Let's use one on Gaki to remove his Disrupted token because I think we only want to end up using him, moving him around a little bit. Um, and then let's go ahead and, yeah, here's what we'll do. 
And then let's go ahead and use Preston. Him we will do the adjust fires, the machine gun fire, with his M1918, which uses a D10. No benefit, no one else here to um, help him, unfortunately. So it's just going to be no Inspire, right? No, 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 wait, hang on. Is Dustman part of his? Yep, he is. Yeah, Dustman, is, he's a squad leader. So he will inspire him. Never mind. We get another one. All right. And he's going to go ahead and first shot, he's going to fire at area four right here. So with one ammo, he'll go ahead and fire at area four. And remember, it's a four and there's no other modifiers. So he just needs a four or higher with one of them. He got a nine. So he does eliminate. And there's two though. And he only eliminates one of them. Now he will do a second attack. So he would spend another ammo. And it's a plus one to his defense. Remember, so it's four becomes a five. So we need at least a five. Nine. Beautiful. Took him out. So that way you're no longer pressuring up on the um, up on the barbed wire here. Very nice. Not too bad. Not too bad. He used up his ammo and he's the only one with the M there. So kind of that's it for them. But pushed him back a little bit. So all right. Looking pretty good. I left his one, huh? Let's see. Kind of want to get, get Wibbon over here to unexhaust him yeah let's do that so let's go ahead and move Wibbon um, move him basically like I said he's kind of like a medic move him over here and that'll be it for the last action so all right that's it for the defense phase on the next attack phase all right attacker phase first card assault a three strength leader while well, all the leaders are three place in area four it's right here move here and he will push through the four, which, because there's a leader now, the barbed wire is ignored. So it's discarded, and he moves to the, towards the four. Uh-oh, he's right there now. Went from we got plenty of room to he's right there. That's how it happens sometimes. All right, second card. MG42, C, square. He's not been placed, so he's placed. At this point, who cares? I'd rather he was in place than I have one of these attacking me. And next card. Assault. Leader three goes in. Area two, square, right here. Move one up, boom. Okay, that's it for the attacker phase. On to the defense phase. I think we'll do one more. Let me get my action tokens back. I think we'll do one more radio artillery. Um, yeah, so we'll spend one on Springer and do one more little Wi-Fi symbol over there. And that way in the next turn, next defense phase, We'll go ahead and use his the ability and, and see if we can get rid of some of these cards. So, yeah, let's do that. All right. Um, and then, so, let's go ahead. We definitely want, at this point, let's just use James is going to go ahead and fire off the M2 here. Wait, M2, yeah, it's fully low. It's fully loaded. So he's going to go ahead and fire the bad boy ops. Let's flip him over. Oop, he was exhausted. Adjust fire. Major action. The M2, you get a D12, which is wonderful. And then Buke, because he inspires him, he gets another D12. <laughs> and we'll spend one ammo, because we're going to fire one burst right now. And we will fire at, um, obviously, the stack of riflemen right here. So three. So he uses three. So it should be an easy hit. <gasps> oh, I saw that two first, and I was worried. We got a seven, so we do eliminate one of them. Um, we'll definitely fire again. M2. So fire at the same spot. So now it's a plus one since so this is our second attack. Plus one for the defender. So now that becomes a four. But it's six and seven, so that is a hit. He's eliminated. Beautiful. Let's fire again. Keep firing. Um, where is close that we can hit? That's kind of maybe a little bit of a threat. He's pretty far away. He's far away. So he's one, two. One, one, two, three, two. So probably. So either here or here. Um, he's closer. Let's do him right here. So it's only a four. And then this is third attack, so five, six. So we need a six to hit him. Four and a one. So that's missed. So he's, he's done now. He didn't. Uh, I think it's a, you have to continue doing the additional attacks. You have to be successful, I'm pretty sure. So he is failed on that one. Good job. Good job, James. Hey, you got two. You got two. He did good. He did good. So. All right, that's it for him. Let's move our man over there. We got Buke there. Trying to look around and see his quick. Like I said, you're kind of holding him back. So you kind of got to choose, you know, where you're, okay, you can't just put everything in one area. You got to balance things out. Um, I think we'll probably be good. 
I don't need anyone else to attack right now. Let's go ahead. We'll use Queen. We'll use his um, assist action. So we'll flip over Preston to his fresh side. So that way he'll be available in the future if we use that in uh, 1918. Actually, I'll have to reload it. So we flipped him over. Now let's go ahead and use him. Use a reload action. So we move ammunition from the ammunition counter to the loaded. So move two over. M1918. Yep, that's him. So we load up the gun. So now we're good. One more token left. One more action. I think we're looking pretty good on everybody, aren't we? Should we get... I don't know. Should we get Gaki over here, maybe? to Just in case. Yeah, let's move Gaki over here as well. Some Gacky over there because maybe he can use his assist action um, on James. So, all right, but that's it for the defense phase. So, let's go to the attacker phase. All right, attacker phase. Go ahead. First card assault a leader three placed in area five square right here. Comes up here. So, move the leader along. Assault rifleman one roll in place one through six. One here and there is a leader okay so he's going to push through the barbed wires i think all the barbed wires are now gone and last third and last assault rifleman roll in place rifleman one one through six a one so here you see so he pushes here everyone gets pushed up which he encounters this grenade booby trap he goes up Ew. rifleman he explodes <laughs> sorry man um any more hell. Move them up. There you go. All right, and that's the three. So we are good there. Man, he is right there. I don't like that. All right, that's a three. And now over to the defense phase. Let's get our tokens back. And now we're going to do the radio artillery first off so we can get rid of these some of these cards, hopefully anyway. So major action, um, radio artillery. So what we do, place on Springer there. Oh, and flip him over, of course. He's exhausted now. For a major action. We'll discard the, all the tokens on Red Artillery Jeep, which we have three little Wi-Fi symbols. So four um, for each radio token discarded, we roll one six-sided die. If one of the results, at least one, is a five or six, discard three cards from the top of the current uh, attacker's card deck. So, so we need a five or a six. On one of these. You can't do multiple. It's not like you get, you know, a whole bunch of cards. But five or six. Come on, baby, please. One, two, three. Total epic fail. So um, that's a real bummer. We spent a lot of time on that. A lot of energy on that. Oh, man, that sucks. Okay, so then, yeah, no cards are discarded. So it's just going to be whatever's left is going to be drawn. So bummer for us. All right, let's... Let's see, I'm trying to look around here. So yeah, so we definitely some fire in here. Let's go ahead and push them back. And then I have a couple ideas here. So let's go ahead. Gaki's going to use an assist. So let's put him over. He's exhausted and in action. And that way we can get James back ready on this machine gun. And then let's go ahead and use Wibben as well. We'll exhaust him to flip James over. Or excuse me, Milosevic, not James. James is over there. Um, there. Um, a little bit is ready as well. Now let's look back over here. Let's go ahead and did I not flip Queen over? Did I use Queen to? I must have used him already, didn't I? To recover Preston, I or do an assist. I had to have. He has to be exhausted still. There's no way he's not because I used it to get Preston back. Yeah. So I just want to. I just remember that. So bummer, but that's okay. That's okay. Let's go ahead and uh, speaking of. Preston here. Let's use him. Just fire. Preston's going to go ahead and fire his M1918. So flip him over. He's got a one, remember, a 1D10. And he has Dustman, his squad leaders, gives him inspires him. So he gets a 2D10. And let's go ahead and fire at this rifleman right here. He's the closest. Three defense. Oh, and let's use an ammo before I forget. Easy. Easy hit. Easy shot. Easy kill. And let's keep it going here. Let's go ahead and use our last loaded ammo. And we will shoot at... We'll shoot at this uh, three strength right here. Strength for the only matters when they're attacking. It doesn't matter for, like, shooting. It just counts as one unit. So go ahead and shoot at him. He has a four. 
plus one because they're a second attack, right? So five defense here. So we can roll these five. Oh, five. Beautiful. And we take him out. All right. Good job. Good job, men. All right. Um, one last action here. Let's I'm trying to look see what we need some help at, maybe. I think we're going to hold off over here. I want to see what our men can do. Kind of almost like let them come closer over here. Same thing over there. So all we'll do is let's go ahead and spend this action to get rid of uh, McConnell's um, disrupted token. A uh, recover action, minor action. Okay, that's it for defense phase. Let's go to the attacker phase. All right, attack phase, card number one. Assault, two strength, roll in place, one through six. Area one square, so right over here. Move up, move up. Leader's taking point right now. Next card, MG42, A square. That's a bummer, so he's going to soften him up now. That's not good. Let's see where he's going to either attack area one or area two. And he rolls. Roll to one, so it's going to be area one. So right here, Krager and Adams. Yikes. Okay, so Krager, he's a five, so... Good sh shoot. That sucks. So he is disrupted. And then Adams has a three valor. Over bottom left. Five. He's also disrupted. So. Dang, man. That sucks. All right. And then third and final card. Assault. Rifleman one. Roll in place. So one, two, six square. Area three. Right here. He moves up. He is adjacent. Right here. And boom. That's it for the attacker phase. Now we go to the defense phase. By the way, um, I think we look, we're not going to look at them, but if you notice, so I'm put putting the um, used ones underneath, there's only three left. There's only one more attacker phase left. If we had been successful with our radio artillery, there would no, be no more attacker phases. So, but we weren't. So there will be one more. All right, all right, all right. No more complaining. Let's, just, let's get through this round with them by surviving. All right, three, four, and five. Okay, so where are we looking at? Where's the where are we getting pushed at? Um, main way or main place I'd say is right over here, of course. So let's go ahead. Yeah, we'll start using our machine guns, I guess. So let's go ahead and use um, James here for an adjust fired fires a machine gun. Fire the M two here. The M two. We have three loaded right now, but that's okay. That should be enough. Uh, sure, should I do a load action? Uh, no, we'll go ahead and just do it now. We want to get rid of some of these guys. So let's go ahead. Activate the M2. He gets a D12. <clears throat> Wonderful. And he has Buke there for Inspire. So he gets another one. So that is 2D12. Um, first off, he's going to fire this rifleman here. Let's spend an ammo. Three defense. So this needs a three. Are you kidding me? A one and a two. Total epic fail. And... He can no longer fire anymore. At least I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Just fired. Pleading for his attack. You can make additional attacks to the same defender and weapon counter until the weapon counter no longer has loaded ammunition. Hmm. Maybe you can keep doing it. I've been doing it where you can only do the one. Let me check the rules quick. All right. Reading the full rules and not just the play rate, I think you can keep attacking um, with that plus one, obviously, you know, modifier to the defender. So even if you miss, I've been playing it. So I've been handicapping myself a little bit. Always check the double check the rules, I guess, right? So, hey, here you go. Learn something every day. All right, so he's going to get a second attack. So let's go ahead and spend the M2 here, right? And he's going to attack again there. Now, spend ammunition. And he's a three plus the one for second attack. So it's actually a four. So it's a four. A one and a nine. Okay, we got him. We did get him. Um, and then we'll do a third attack using the last bit of loaded ammunition. This is a plus two to defense. And let's go ahead and shoot at who's closest, him or him. Let's do, this doesn't really matter. Oh, we're here. So he's actually closest. That's um, not a negative. So let's do him. So a four becomes a six. So release a six, five, ooh, and 11. Boom, you are taken out. Get out of here. Beautiful. All right. Ooh, I'm stuck. My dice are over. All right, that is it for him. Now let's go ahead and do a, yeah, let's do a machine gun attack. Milosevic here is going to just fire. He'll fire his M1919. Or should I load it first? Yeah, let's do that. Let's load it. So what we'll do is he'll actually use a minor action to reload, which means transfer three over up to five. So beautiful. The next turn he'll be available to rock and roll if, if needed, if needed. Um, Let's do... 
kind of holding them back, but we're looking pretty good right now. I'm not super worried. Um, let's go ahead and get um, Adams. Let's get him back um, undisrupted. And same thing with Krager. He's the one on him, so he's undisrupted. Um, and I have one action left. Can't see there's not really anyone else that needs to, just in case, I suppose I could move him down. Let's move Jenkins down. We'll leave this exposed for now. And then we'll move Jenkins down here. No, I can only have four defenders in an area. That's right, you can't move them. Okay, we're actually kind of sitting pretty that I can think of. What do you guys think? <laughs> like looking around, I'm like, I don't know. It's not really necessary. So let's we could do Bosch here. Could fire. Let's just do that. Do a regular fire action. So flip him over. He has a four, uh, excuse me, a 1d8. So his personal weapon, 1d8. Uh, no bonuses for anything. He's going to fire at this leader right here, area four. So he seems a four or higher. A two. So missed. So a little burst from his machine gun or something, a submachine gun, and total miss. So, all right. That's it for defense phase. So let's go to the last attacker phase of wave one here. All right. Last attacker phase. First card. Leader three is placed in area three. So right here. So everyone moves up. I don't know why I rolled anything. It's automatically, it says area three. I don't know why I rolled. I got in my head, I need to roll. Anyway, it's like rolling dice. Second card, leader three, placed in area one. So over here, ooh, looks like we are gonna hold them back. I'm thinking, hoping, praying. And last one, MG42, place or activate C. So he's out there, so he's gonna activate. So now we get to roll. Roll a six, that's area six. So he's gonna shoot at area six. There's no one over there. <laughs> I don't know. can't believe I moved everyone over. I had no one over there right now, but hey, I hadn't had to worry about it, so no big deal. So that is it. He shoots the harmless area. He doesn't realize there's no one over there. <laughs> I fooled him. Waste of ammunition. That is it for the attackers. That's our last attacker phase. So this is the last defense phase of the game. Um I think because each of the waves ends once the Once attack, once the defenders, if there's no attack, um, excuse me, no, uh, no cards to draw, then it should be the end of, end of the, the wave here. So I'm looking, I still know what I would do per se. Hmm. All right. So the last defense phase here, honestly. So the main thing you want to do is you want to make sure you don't have any disrupted men because if they're disrupted, it's going to hurt your morale. Um, so when it comes down to it at the end of a round, which we're about to have the end of this wave here, right? Um, this attack, this phase, um, a one of four, right? Is that if any of the attackers were still in one of my defensive spaces at the end here and I didn't clear them out, I lose automatically. Also, if my morale, which starts at five, drops to zero, I lose automatically. Um, neither is going to happen because I don't have any disrupted, so I'm not going to worry about that. And then in between rounds here, I'm going to get to move my men where I want to, other than three men go back to the log cabin automatically. But everyone else, I can kind of put where I want to, with some restrictions, of course. But I'm looking. I got machine guns where I think I feel like a good spot for them right now. They're also going to get reloaded next, you know, in between the rounds, in between the waves. So also get to re-put grenades and barbed wire back in the places. So... And the attackers, the Germans here, they actually get removed from the board and then it's reset for the next round as well, which we are not going to replay. The only thing is the machine guns are left where they are. So maybe should attack them, but I don't want to, because I'm looking, I'm like, I don't want to end up, because um, the machine guns are all seven, 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 seven. So I'd have to use one of my machine guns probably. Oh man, I know it's tough, right? So I guess we can technically try a couple of them. So let's do Slape will fire his personal weapon, 2d6. So just roll 2d6 and fire here. So he has to get at least a seven. No, it's only three. So no good there. Milosevic, he'll try. Flip him over. So he has a 1d8. So he has to get a seven. Two, no good. It's the only thing because the machine guns do stay. So I was like, well, I can try to attack them. Um, Fancher here with his D8. Flip him over. A one. <laughs> Luckily, there's no critical failures in this game. 
Um, and then finally, well, I got two more actually. So let's do Dustman over here. His D8. He'll shoot at Machine Gun A. Oh, I got an eight. He got him. <sighs> Blown up. See a sucker. Um, I'm pretty sure they, yeah, they stay in between. And so it's one, it's one good thing to get rid of them. I'm glad it, I remembered that. So, and finally, let's do Fort here with his D8. Flip him over. Shooting here. Seven or eight. Oh, I see the seven or eight. Come on. Uh, three. All right. I tried. So, all right. That is the end of the first wave of attackers. Hopefully you guys got a good idea of how this game works. Landreth Ridge, Battle of the Bulge from David Thompson, art by Nils Johansson. Plays good, looks good. Um, pretty classic kind of States of Siege style design. It looks a little complicated at first and you see the different iconographies. Hopefully you guys saw it's not complicated, not hard. It's just a lot of making sure, okay, you know what, you know, a certain symbol is or having those letters that are, okay, that's how you can fire a machine gun or that's how you use, you know, radio artillery or just the radio for building up intelligence, which I did not do because I focused on artillery, which did nothing for me. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. This has been Wayne Hansen. Please, if you like the video, please subscribe. The majority of my viewers are not subscribers. I'd really appreciate it. It truly helps me to get more games to show off to you guys. So until next time, everybody, later.